Hi, today I want to show you how to set up Stripe subscriptions for your web application slash SaaS in total. And this is today a super simple setup where the user will click a button and we're going to pass on their information to create a Stripe subscription checkout session. We're not going to talk about webhooks and user management because there is more that comes to subscriptions because when the user pays, you want to grant the user access. But what if their payment fails, right? We want to then resend emails and put their account into recovery. And if the recovery was not successful after some time, we want to cancel that subscription and remove their access. I want to make sure that after their access is removed that they can't continue using our product in whatever form or way. So payments for subscription really go hand in hand with authentication. Now. We're not going to build the next member stack in this video, but we have a two hour, or I think it's almost a two and a half hour course inside of the membership site at nocodeprocode.com with templates, with everything pre-made for you. So even if you don't wanna watch the whole course, you can just copy and paste the templates, replace your API keys, and it will work on your app. Um, but you also have the course to understand how to set that up if you want to have a super tight system that is on the quality level like a solution like Outsetta or member stack without paying them their commissions which are 5% extra on top, right? If you want to build it yourself inside of Toddle and Xano, we have a course on nocodeprocode.com teaching you step by step how to set this up without having to pay external services ridiculous amounts and without even owning your own data. So if you want to learn how to set this all up yourself, go to nocodeproco.com and become a member. We have daily office hours to help you with the setup, but we also have templates, resources, and the specific course to help you get everything set up. But that was enough advertisement for today. Let's start the whole setup for Stripe subscriptions just to charge a normal subscription. This could be like a monthly donation or something very simple where you don't need advanced access controls. If you do, we got all that resources and all that help on nocodeproco.com. And the link to sign up for that is in the bio. But, you know, how about we just start with the back end, right? And here we go. I want to go to my... Uh, to my Xano account that is for this kind of videos. And we want to go to APIs, and I want to create a new API called Simple Stripe Subscriptions. Just like that, we call it Simple Stripe Subscriptions. I'm going to save this, and we're going to create a new endpoint called Subscribe. Just like, excuse me, just like that, Subscribe. And now, I'm just going to go and make this a post endpoint. I'm going to save this. And now in here, we're going to add function. And I'm going to look for an external API request. Now I'm going to import curl. And now we're going to go to Stripe's documentation. I'm going to go to Stripe's documentation here. And we want to create a checkout session. So let's copy this. Let's go back to Xano. Let's paste this in the curl and we import this. And now we got this and we want to replace this with our own API key. So I already have done this, but if you have not already, please do this. Please um, go in the Xano settings part in settings and let's just do this together again. Let's actually just delete my Stripe API key so we can do it together. We go to settings and we go to um, environment variables and we go on manage and on here let's delete this i create one called stripe underscore underscore secret just like that and now i'm going to go to my stripe dashboard here we go uh let's go to stripe here we go uh, stripe here we go. Uh, we're now logging in into Stripe. Here we go. We got video test account and let's open my dashboard. Beautiful. So now I got that all 
activated here. And now we want to go to developers inside of Stripe. We want to go to API keys under the developer part. And we see the secret key here. I want to click on reveal test key. And I'm right now in test mode. If you want to do this in live mode, it would be the same principle. But if you need help with that, that's where we got office hours. So we copy this and we go to um, Xano again and we paste that. Oh, <laughs> we paste that in here and I save this. And now I got it saved. Now we just want to make sure that we save this configuration in Xano and then that we reload our API so that it has the time to propagate with everything. I go back to my API and in here where my API key is, I'll just remove it. And in here I go to environment, Stripe secret, and now I got my API key. And now we see this line item here for product, uh, for price ID. We now need to go back to Stripe and create a product. The easiest way I can do that is just type, oh, product inside of here and we go to create a product and now we create a product that is a subscription so we can call this product SAS right and I can go to um, you know we just have standard pricing we can do $99 recurring and then you can set your interval I'm going to go with monthly and then you can decide if you want users, users usage mattered or not. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but those are things that we talk about inside of Office Hours. So if you want to join, the link is in the bio. Um, and also in the membership, you get templates for all of that and additional uh, you know, support through the educational resources that you're getting in there. And then we have additional settings. We can add a price description and a lookup key or we could add a free trial if we want. That is legacy. Setting a trial period um, per price is no longer recommended and is, in co uh, is, in uh, is incompatible um, with checkout and quotes. Free trials can be set per subscription or quote instead. So, you know, this is the legacy version, but you still have that option in adding it in there. It's no longer suggested, but you could do that. So we can now un go on safe. And if you need help again with making a subscription that has a free trial, we, has we have templates for all of that inside of the no code pro code membership. But here we go, we got our SaaS product created. And now I can go on the three dots, I copy the price ID. And now I can go back to Xano. And in here, I would just paste my new Stripe price ID in here. I go on update and now more than likely, if you do a subscription, you just want to hard code the quantity to one. Um, but there are more advanced use cases that we're not going to talk about in this video. This is again what we do um, in the membership extensively. But we got that and the success URL would probably be your, you know, your path, maybe a thank you page or something. We just have it go to example.com slash success, you know, to just simplify everything. But that is basically everything we need. Now I can go on save and I can run this. And now we'll, we'll see that something is off and we see you, oh, you specified payment mode, but, pass and, but you passed on a recurring, um, either switch to subscription um, or use one-time prices because the price that we have in Stripe in here is a recurring price per month. We need to go in here and we need to go to our mode and we need to change the mode that is preset in their documentation of payment to change this to subscription. So I'm going to update this now. I'm going to save it. I'm going to reload. And now we will get our link generated for this session that I can now paste in my browser. And what the heck did I just paste? Oh yeah. In Xano, you got a two finger click if you want to copy things. Um, there is some update that they made that um, made it a little bit more complicated. But here we go, we got our subscription. Now the issue that I want to address in this video is how the heck do we know who will be subscribing to this? So we need to pass on metadata that you know helps us identify who is subscribing. So we can add an input here 
and we can add a text of user underscore ID because most of the times we want to base this on a user ID so we know who has made that payment because most people will use a different email for payments than they would probably use for your account. So you can do that and we can go to API request in here and then we want to add another set filter in here and we want to set something like meta data and then we do open close brackets and now we can add our um, metadata param. I can do user underscore ID and then the value of this will be the input of user ID. Now when I save this and publish and generate the Stripe object again, we should be able to go in here and we should be able to see that the metadata object has been created and we pass on a user ID. Now the user ID is empty, so let's add a random user ID in here and let's tell Grammarly to please go away and let's run this again. And now we see that if I go inside my Stripe object, this represents the configuration that is behind the payment link. We have successfully added the metadata for the user ID with this user specific ID. So if that payment will be made, we will know that this was related to this user and then we can act activate their account when the webhook comes back. And those are the things that we do at No Code Pro Code in the membership because those are from case to case always different and we have a course and more advanced resources on that. Um, most of the cases you just wanna listen for one webhook and you know Stripe makes it very easy for that. Um, but what I like to do is I like to also add a client reference ID, which is Stripe's way of also identifying them. The metadata option is kind of like something you can go through the back door. You can add as much metadata as you want actually. But um, what I like to do is I also like to add the client reference ID. So we add another set filter that will be client underscore reference underscore ID. And there is a typo. There are a few typos. Reference client refer. There's a lot of rrr. reference ID. Client reference ID. Let's just uh, now. I wish I had Grammarly again. Uh, let's just look for Stripe. I think that was the syntax on how you write it. Yes, Stripe payment client reference ID, here we go, uh, Stack Overflow is still great, I still love it, let's just make sure, yeah, that was typed right, here we go. And now in this client reference ID path, I can go on value and I will just input my user ID. That will be the reference on how we identify the user. So I'm going to save this here and now when I reload the request, we can look at the metadata that is behind this checkout. We will see that we have the client reference ID that will be our user ID. This is how we identify the, the user who will be paying this. And then we have our metadata with the user ID as well, just to make sure that we have double safeguards in there to identify who made that purchase. That is very important. So. What we now want to do is we want to stop um, exposing our API key because if we would return this request exactly like this to our front end, this API key would be exposed to the user and they may be able to use some of Stripe's APIs to cash out money on their bank account or to do some fraudulent stuff with our Stripe account, which we don't want because this is a protected key that should not be ever exposed to any of your users. So we want to go and click on copy here and I want to add a function. We do the create variable function. And in the create variable, I call this payment underscore link, for example. I will go to API 1 as the, as the response. I will paste that in here. I will expand. I will expand on response, expand on result, scroll all the way down, and we will see URL. And that is it. I can now publish. And now I want to go to the response in Xano and want to make sure that we only return the payment link. I go on save, run again, and now I will be getting only the payment link. And here we go. And now 
when I were to go in here and pay hey at no code pro code dot com and start my subscription no code pro code dot com and I do four two 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 and now I got to do four two four five uh, four two uh, uh, two five here we go because I, I just you, you could just always type four two four two in Stripe to to make the test payment uh, but now since we're in 2024, like it would be in the past and it doesn't work. So we do 4242 and then card hold name 4242-4242, zip code 4242-4242. I don't want to save my information. And now that test payment will go through because we have a lot of 42s. And now here's the thing. We got redirected. But now more importantly, let's go to our Stripe account and let's go to transactions. And we see that this payment was successful. A subscription was created. But now importantly, if we look at our API events, right, we will see here that we have, um, you know, the invoice was paid, for example. Um, if we were to expand on here, um, we would see some information, right? and we get a customer ID, but this doesn't help us identify who paid. We got the customer email, but the customer may use a different email for this purchase. So this is why we are adding metadata. So let's look at this, if this one includes the metadata. Some of the Stripe events don't include metadata. So here we go, we got metadata, we got some metadata. Um, here we go but that may be the payment metadata itself. I want to look for subscription successful. Okay, a request to create a checkout session, no. A draft for invoice, the payment for what succeeded, an invoice has changed. I think it may be in this event here. Um, let's look at here. Customer, and we got the customer ID. Uh, let's, how about we just do, um, Command F to find it. Metadata. Here we go. And it should be somewhere in those here. So how about we go on done? In here, we should look for client reference ID, invoice paid, um, invoice payment successful, invoice paid. So we added metadata in here. There's a lot of data. So sometimes we got to search a little bit. Um, charge. Client reference ID should be somewhere in here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's look at that. Um, actually, I should probably be looking for the event. Um, I'm wondering if the event of subscription wasn't sent yet and it may took a little bit of time. Let's reload this page actually because it may uh, took a little bit of time to trigger the webhook. Uh, here we go. Payment intent successful. Client secret. Metadata on behalf of. Okay, so we got to go through a few of those <laughs> to figure out um, where the data is, which endpoint. Let's do this. Uh, for 242, name for 242, uh, created customer uh, invoice payment method. Uh, we didn't do installments, type card. Okay, so what we want to do actually is I want to go, not open Discord, no. <laughs> I want to go back to Arc. Here we go. And I want to look in Xano what I, um, what was the ID I selected. Okay, that was the ID. Let's create another one actually with an ID that I can, uh, easier find because sometimes it's a little bit troubling to 
find that ID. So now we create a checkout session here. Let's copy this and let's paste it in here. And let's just do this again. Let's do 42424242424242. Oh, that's email. Oops. Let's do hey at nocodeprocode.com. And we do a few times for two, just like that. For five, for two. And here we do user. And here I do, here we go. And let's pay this again. And now we want to see where we find that data because we're sending metadata if we pay through this one as we created this specific link with metadata. Sometimes it's a little bit troubling figuring out where that data is and what webhook to listen to. This is why I said, you know, um, you, you, you can't really make a standardized um, tutorial on how to do those things because it's always different, right? It really depends on if you do usage-based and all of those things. But let's look at this again. Um, now we see we got some data in here. So let's look at that. Let's look at the first object here. Um, our user ID is a bunch of access. So how about we look for a bunch of access in here somewhere? And I don't see anything yet. Let's see, licensed, we got the price. We got some information here. Um, subscription, um, automatic, uh, here we go. So it's not in here. <coughs> let's look at this one. We should find a lot of access. Uh, we also get some information here. Uh, licensed, merge, recurring, subscription. Here we go. Uh, we don't find any metadata attached on here. That is interesting. Um, and then invoice has been charged. Let's look at this one. Um, charge automatic. I'm wondering if we need to make the link ourselves because if I go to a request to confirm check on session completed, right? I would probably look at this one, right? I assume that the response in here contains my metadata. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we got to do. We see the we got to look for this webhook right this webhook has my client reference id and we get an id with it right this id and it ends in xxf and then when the payment was successful um we would probably link that back so which id is the one that we need to look for um object um probably want to look at that here right so in here, we get information. Um, we get some information in here. We get the client reference ID, and we will also get the metadata somewhere in here. This is why I like to add both. So if we don't get one of them, we always have the other one. So in this one here, in this a request to confirm a checkout session completed, right? we would um, get the data for the client reference ID, right? And we will get some of the payment information here. So here we will see status succeeded. So that was successful. Um, and then we will have our client reference ID here. So we know this user, this is our user. And then we can look at this ID, which is RQE ending in RQE. And I should be able to look at this invoice and reference it back to it. So that RQE um, will create a payment intent, right? That RQE here, here we go, that RQE. Um, and we got some information here, RQE. And then I would go a new payment for was created. And that is we'll be linking back to its client secret. So in here, we probably created the client secret somewhere. Let's look at that ID URL. And we got this webhook here. Um, 
giving us the payment intent ID. So we got the payment intent ID here. So, it, it, you know, payments are very complex. We got we to gotta tie those together. So in this example here, the first part that gives us the information is it's going to give us an ID. Um, and then in here, this is probably where we want to look for because in here we get our payment intent number, right? And, and then tied to that later below here, we get the client reference ID and we know this user. So we know the payment intent was created and we got the payment intent here. This is probably the number that we want to look for. So let's copy that one. Here we go. And then we create, we see a new payment for this payment intent was made. And if I go to command F and put the payment ID number in here, we'll see um, in here the payment ID ends in uh, the payment intent, ends in C2, and we see C2, you know, this is the payment intent that was linked to the specific user. Um, here you go, um, was in test mode, and we see that that payment um, intent was created. So we got the payment intent ID, and then we see a draft invoice was created, and we see this draft invoice links back to the spe speci specific payment intent, and then we see a draft invoice to was finalized. It r links again back to the payment intent. So we want to then talk to our database to link the payment intent to the to this specific subscription, right? So to link it back, so that we figure out who it was, because this one will probably not contain our client reference ID as it is for the payment intent. And let's see if that's true. Yeah, that's true. And then we see um, was charged. So the card was charged. And this references it back to the payment intent. So you want to look for multiple webhooks. You want to look for webhooks that contain the client reference ID and then create the payment intent. And then you want to reference the payment intent back to the relational user based on their user reference ID. So there are a lot of kinds of how you construct, how you have to structure the logic to make sure that you're always on track. The same thing counts if users don't pay. Um, and then you would go again in here and you see the payment intent was succeeded. So we see in here that was succeeded. Status succeeded. So the user paid. And then we see, you know, the invoice was charged. And if the invoice was paid, it, it references it again back to the payment intent. So we see when the user creates a checkout session, uh, you know, we get their reference ID, of course. We don't have a payment intent in here yet. And then it creates the payment intent, right? And in here, it creates a, a request to confirm a checkout session. It confirms the session. It creates the payment intent. And now this payment intent here, which is very important because we need to see if that payment intent, if the intent to pay was succeeded, if the payment was successful, this will be then referenced and linked in this webhook that will be sent to our Xeno database to our client reference ID. So this is our user ID here, right? And we know this user ID owns this payment intent for this payment. And we want to look for if those are created. And then we want to link them always to the user so that if that specific payment intent comes back as a webhook, and being completed, we can trace it back to which user that payment intent was owned to. Now, I'm not going to lie, I've been using Stripe API since three years, and I still don't know out of the top of my head how things work. You have to go inside of it to figure out how it has to work for what you're specifically trying to do. Because if you do usage-based billing, it's completely different. Right. If you are creating custom quotes and you want to have that quotes paid on a monthly basis, that may change. It's a different thing. If you use Stripe Connect, it's a different thing. If you use, um, you know, pay whatever you want every month, it's a different approach in doing it. Um, or if you, you know, it, it's a different approach. But now we want to take this generic approach. I just wanted to show you, you know, how this works on the back end. But now that we create those, we want to go back in here, take the Xano API endpoint, copy the endpoint URL, make sure that we publish it. We go to Toddle, and now inside of Toddle, in here, we're going to go to the diff. We change the color to be gray 100. We add a button, and that button will be 
subscribe. Subscribe, just like that. And then now I'm going to add my API in here and I call it subscribe. And now I will put my API endpoint in here, make sure it's a post endpoint. I add my parameter of user underscore ID so we can track it back with the client reference ID so we know who paid and we can track kind of like their status throughout all the different kind of webhooks event that we can subscribe to. And now in here, I will just create a variable called user underscore ID and I will give it a user ID. And now I will go to my API. This would probably be dynamic coming from your auth me endpoint, but I add my user ID in here and then I go on this button here and then I go on events. I'm going to go on click on click. I want to do the API call to subscribe and on success, I want to go to the URL and the URL should be the response of that API that is data. This will return the URL. So let's try this right now. So let's go on the live page. I would click on this button. It would create the session and I would go to Stripe to pay and that metadata, that client reference ID that helps us reference who paid has been added on there. Now, if you want your user to manage their existing subscriptions, you can add Stripe, uh, Stripe billing portal AP, uh, docs. And that's probably something that you can self-serve um, for a user and they have a no-code solution without API needed. So I wanna show you how to add that. You go and set up customer portal inside of Stripe. Here we go. And this is this portal, you've probably seen it a few times. Um, you go on the customer portal configuration page inside of Stripe. And I wanna actually change the Stripe account I'm on to be my video test account. Here we go. And now in here, I can activate test link. Here we go. And then I can copy this link and I'm just simply going to go to Toddle. I will add a different button for the billing portal. I can call this billing portal, just like that. I wanna make sure you know they're uh, under each other and not inside of each other. And I go on the diff and add like a little bit 0 0.5 RAM gap. You can style it however you want. I go to this button, I make it an A tag, so a hyperlink, A tag, a pre render, we don't need that, and I set href, and then I will add that in here, that payment link. So now when we click on here, we will be going to our Stripe billing portal, and I will be able to log in and check my subscription. That's hey at nocodeprocode.com. And uh, of course, um, this is in test mode, but your user will then be able to see that information. So they will be able to click on subscribe and it's going to send the variable with their unique user ID to the backend so that we don't expose our API key. It only returns the link. Then we open that link in a new tab and they'll be able to pay that. Now again, there is a lot of complexity into managing the user who paid, right? So that's why there are solutions like member stack. That's why there are solutions like Outsetter that kind of like make this not a concern for you in like managing the state of the user journey. But I think owning that process of, you know, knowing everything about your user and about their subscription and you know, managing that yourself is a big benefit because you don't have someone else manage those important things for you and you can customize the journey. So if you want to implement those things with granting a user access, if they pay, removing their access if they don't pay and, you know, figuring out those webhooks that you always get sent, who is it for? Like, because Stripe is not adding like their name or their email or their I, even their customer or their client reference ID on every webhook that they sent. They only do it on a few and then you have to piece this thing out together, right? So if you wanna you know, dive more deeper into that, we have a whole course on nocodeprocode.com. 
um, that talks about everything in depth, how to prevent people from stopping their subscription and still using their, your product and all of that. So you'll be always smarter than your users. Uh, if you wanna you know, learn more about that, um, feel free to go to nocodeproco.com, but you'll find the same resources also on the Stripe documentation. And if you don't want to join, just go on the Stripe documentation. It may take you a little bit longer to figure everything out, and there may be some trial and error. The documentation, though, is publicly available. If you want the narrowed version for Toddle and Xano, you will find that information inside of the No Code Pro Code membership as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions about implementing Stripe subscription or if you face any roadblocks, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'm happy to help. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.